Okay, so Lauren, what we're going to talk about is, it's for all the girls and boys at home, about the importance of breathing through the nose. And uh, there's many kids that are going around and have their mouth open and I don't think they actually realise what their nose is for because I would say, if you understand what your nose is for, you're going to use it, would you think? Yeah, yeah of course. So what do we use our nose for? Well, our nose is for, for breathing, of course. And what are our eyes for? seeing and their ears are for listening. listening so and our mouth is for talking, talking and Eating. and what else do you do with your mouth when you're thirsty are uh, excellent so your mouth is for talking for eating and drinking and your nose is for smelling mm. and breathing and apart from a dog you know remember charlie the donkey he was always breathing through the nose. Or if we have cows outside, because we're living in the country, and the hens, we're all nasal breeders. Yeah. And the only one that goes around with the mouth open is muffin and, yeah. and noodles. So dogs of all animals are the main mouth breeders. And it's, generally, they will do it to cool their body temperature. But, you know, you see the dog with the mouth open and the tongue is hanging out and the dog is panting. But it doesn't mean that little boys and girls should do it. Sure, it doesn't. <laughs> kind of looks strange because it's something that a dog does. And, you know, we're not dogs. We're human beings. Yeah. So we really need to get what our nose is for. So by breathing through the nose, it helps to filter the air and moisten the air. And it helps to protect our airways. And it's very good for our sleep and concentration. Because if we have the mouth open and we're breathing through the mouth during the day, and if we have the mouth open during sleep, our sleep is affected and our concentration is affected. So there's no coincidence that children who mouth breed, very often they have poorer sleep, they have more sleep problems and they have concentration problems. And if one has sleep disorder breathing, if they have sleep issues, they have a 40% increased risk of special education needs. So it's a really scary prospect. And the other thing is about sleep is Children who are sleepy with poor sleep often contribute to by mouth breathing. They have 10 times the risk of learning difficulties. So that's why we are doing these series of videos to put them out there for kids to understand why do we breathe through the nose. So we're breathing through the nose for smelling and for breathing and for poor sleep. And do you think it looks a bit better just breathing through the nose? Or do you think it looks better going around with the mouth hanging open and the tongue hanging out? I think it looks nicer when your mouth is closed. Oh, for sure. And where should the tongue be? Resting in the roof of your Excellent, mouth. excellent. So for the little boys and girls at home, we'll do the popping sound. So in order to establish that three quarters of the tongue is resting in the roof of the mouth, sometimes it's helpful to do this. You remember doing that as a baby? Yeah. yeah. So will you show? So in order to make that sound, where did you place your tongue? In the, in the roof of the mouth. Excellent stuff. And you could also even practice saying the N, N. So the, the tip of the tongue should be not quite against the front teeth. We don't want the tongue against the front teeth because the tongue is very powerful. And if the tongue is pushing out against the front teeth, tongue can move teeth. So it's really important that we have the tongue resting in the roof of the mouth. And when the tongue is in the correct resting posture, it helps to grow the face forward. So it's really important that we have forward development of the face because when the face grows forward, the mouth is sufficiently large enough to house the tongue. And as a result, then the airway is going to be good because we want a good airway. Do you like playing sports? You like doing your gymnastics? Yeah. Well, for sports, it's really important that you have good breathing because if we go around with our mouth open during the day, we're going to have excessive breathlessness during sports and we gas out too soon, meaning that we have to be breathing hard and panting. Whereas efficient breathing is about when you're doing physical exercise that you're not running out of air. You know, you're able to go faster and you're able to go stronger and you're able to do all your gymnastics and your swimming and all the sports that you do. And nasal breathing is a big part of that. Okay, so that's really the importance of nose breathing. And we can see that functionally, you're pretty good at breathing through the nose because you're not feeling air hunger by breathing through the nose. But for the whole purpose of doing all of the exercises and also, what do you wear across your lips at night? Tape. Tape. And tape is huge, isn't it? 
it's really important for helping to bring the lips together because you know it's really what we're trying to do is change habits and we're changing a habit that it takes about 60 to 70 days for a child to change that habit to generate neuroplasticity that there's new neural pathways and that the behavior associated with breathing is in and out through the nose and the normal physiological mode of breathing for the human being is nasal in and out through your nose regardless of age if you were to look and open a medical textbook and if you were to look at a function of the mouth in terms of breathing there is no function the mouth serves no function in terms of breathing the medical textbook will always talk about the nose however 25 percent do you remember calculations 25 percent to 50 percent of children that's a lot of kids isn't it yeah. are going around with their mouths open and how does it affect, how can it affect these kids? Well, you, you might have learning difficulties. Learning difficulties. And do you think, it, does it look more intelligent or less intelligent if you have your mouth open? So if you're going around with your mouth open and your tongue is hanging out, does it look more intelligent or less intelligent? Less. Less intelligent. So to look intelligent, to be good at sports, to be good in school, to have good sleep and... Uh, you know, it's really important that we breathe in and out through the nose. So are we ready? We're going to start on all of the little exercises so we can teach the kids how to do it as well, yeah? Okay. okay so I'm just going to get our myo tape. So you know how to put this on? Yeah. So we take it off. And I'm going to pass you the tape there. So I'll take that off you. So this tape is designed to go around the mouth. And what Lauren has done is she's taken away the tape and she's stretched it by about 20 to 30 percent. And that's perfect. And she's placed it so it surrounds the mouth. And do you feel it kind of bringing your lips together? Yeah. So if a child forgets to breathe through their nose for any reason, the tape is automatically going to bring their lips together. Yeah. yeah. OK. And you can still talk and communicate with it. And this is to be worn both during wakefulness. So during the day, especially for about 30 to 60 minutes a day. And it would be ideal even if it was 90 minutes because I want children to switch to nasal breathing and we need to change the habit. So with the exercises, we can often help the obstruction of the nose. Why does the child have their mouth open? Is it because their nose is stuffy? We can help fix that. Or is it because they have enlarged adenoids and a functional dentist can help fix that? So we want to establish why is the child breathing through the mouth in the first instance? Is it just because of habit? Is it because they've forgotten about what their mouth is for? How could you forget about what the mouth is for? But it happens. So we need kids to switch to nasal breathing.